Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, at the dedication of the 20th Main Monument, about 25 years after the battle, is standing there looking out across the old members of the regiment who had participated in that great fight on Little Round Top on 2 July. And as he looks out there at all those gray-headed men, he says, we were young then, but we're not yet old. And I think we could do again what we did then, even as I wonder now how we did it then. And then he goes on and he dedicates the monument. And at the end of his dedication speech, he says, in great deeds something abides, and on great fields something stay. Forms change and pass and bodies disappear, but spirits linger to consecrate the ground as the vision place of souls. And reverent men and women from afar and generations that know us not hard drawn shall come to this deathless field to ponder and dream. And lo, the shadow of a mighty presence shall wrap them in its bosom, and the power of the vision shall pass into their souls. That's what that staff ride process is all about. I got the vision. I've seen it because I've studied it. I've thought about it. And, and I have been gifted with the ability to communicate the vision. That's what I try to do. I try to get them to see things as they were in the context of the moment. I ask them to suppress what they know about the outcome and consider the possibility that it could have turned out differently. What could it have turned? What, what, what could have turned the tide? What could have made it go the other way? More often than not, it comes down to a key individual at a key place, at a key moment, makes a difference. You know, Eisenhower tells a story in this book I mentioned earlier about uh, uh, at ease. And it's the story of uh, Frank Haskell, who's a 36-year-old lieutenant aide to camp to, Josh, uh, to uh, General Gibbon, who's the commander in the center of the Union line on the third day. And Eisenhower tells a story. He says, you've got 160,000 men, 90,000 Federals, 70,000 Confederates locked in mortal combat in a space hardly more than a mile and a half square and the actions of a second lieutenant, a second lieutenant, are going to have consequence. Why? Gibbon is wounded early in the artillery barrage. And as the Confederate assault comes forward, Haskell, the aide, realizes that his general's not there, but the attack is coming right for his point, his position. What would the general tell me to do if he were here? He'd say, go get reinforcements. And so Haskell, on his own, rides off to General Hayes in the north. General Hayes, we need reinforcements now. General Hayes, thinking the request comes from General Gibbons, says, my compliments to General Gibbon, Gibbons. Tell him I will send reinforcements. And Haskell says, and they cannot come too quickly. And then he rides to the south and goes to General Harrow. And he says, Harold, we need men. And Harold says, they're on their way. And suddenly, if you're an attacking Confederate, what you see is not Union forces beginning to turn and move away from the fight. Rather, you see columns of blue infantry running to the angle, running to the point of decision must have been heartily disheartening. And yet it was Frank Haskell, this lieutenant, who on his own initiative brought those reinforcements to the critical place at the critical time. I think Dwight Eisenhower was taken with that example because in modern warfare, we, we begin to reduce or to minimize the impact that a single individual can have. When we think about single individuals, we think about theater commanders or corps or division commanders or even brigade commanders, that lowly lieutenants or even junior enlisted cannot make a difference, when in fact they can. One determined individual at the key place at the key time. Now, you're not gonna know who those individuals are. So what you've got to do as you're bringing this force along is you've got to inculcate into every one of those individuals that kind of commitment to the endeavor so that if called upon, we call it that hua spirit. You know, that hua spirit thing is really all about that false courage that we instill in times of peace and that we hope will carry over into war so that at the right moment, with that hua spirit in mind, some young person in a safe place will get up and expose himself to danger because it has to be done. And that, that act will perhaps make a difference. That's how you build the confidence in the force, the confidence in the individual that makes that enterprise bigger than itself. Human dimension of combat, that's what you'll get from walking the field.